Welcome to the shop guys, Alex the car guy here and today we have a Camry that has a bad O2 sensor. This is a common issue and identifying the correct sensor is the key to an easy fix. As always I have placed links on the description below to the parts and tools I use. There are a total of 4 O2 sensors in the Camry. Two are accessible from the top of the car and two are accessed from the bottom. Let's start with the top ones. Bank 1, sensor 1 is located towards the firewall of the car. This sensor is known as an upstream sensor, which means it is before the catalytic converter. Towards the front of the car, behind the radiator, we have bank 2, sensor 1. This sensor is also known as an upstream sensor. Finally, on the bottom of the car, we have two lower sensors, bank 1, sensor 2, and bank 2, sensor 2. While the car I'm working on is a 2007 Camry, this diagram should be the same for other Camrys equipped with a V6 engine. To determine which of the four sensors have failed, it is just a matter of pulling the code that triggered the check engine light. In my case, I got a P0057 and P0161. This indicates an issue with bank 2, sensor 2. Here you can see bank 2, sensor 1. However, I need to replace bank 2, sensor 2, so let's move to the bottom of the car. Here you can see bank 2, sensor 2. Remember, this pipe comes from behind the radiator. Now, the other pipe over here is bank 1, sensor 1. This pipe comes from the side that's facing the firewall, so that's the keyboard to remember. Firewall, radiator. Before I can remove the sensor, I first must unplug it. Now this is fairly easy, all I have to do is press on the connector to separate it. I'll demonstrate from the outside of the car. Something like this, press and then I pull. Once the connector has been disconnected, it is now time to remove the sensor by untreading it. To do that, I use a special tool that slides over the oxygen sensor like this. This will allow me to turn the sensor and get it off the pipe. So here I slide the tool over the sensor and then I prepare my wrench to loosen the sensor up. Sometimes the sensors can be hard to remove so in this case I am starting with the large breaker bar and see if I can get it going. Man this thing is really tight in there, it just shouldn't take that much force. The other thing I'm noticing is that it's pretty hard to turn the sensor, it shouldn't take this much force. Once it's broken loose it should be able to turn. So I am getting a feeling that likely the previous mechanic probably cross-threaded this sensor when he put it in place. Yep, this feels pretty hard. I think the oxygen sensor was definitely cross-threaded in there. Not a problem, as long as I can get it off I can fix the threads later. Well, after struggling for a little bit, the sensor can now be removed. Yep, these threads look pretty messed up. Not a problem, I'm gonna fix it using this tool which is basically just a thread chaser. Before I use the tool, I lubricate the threads so it's gonna go in nice and smooth. Oh yeah, it is a really good feeling to restore the threads back to the sensor location. Okay, now it's just a matter of removing the tool. Wow, this thing turns tremendously easier. The treads are now fully restored. Before I install the new sensor, I place a little bit of copper anti-seize on the tread just to make sure it doesn't give me problems down the road if I ever have to remove it. Alright, now it's just a matter of putting the sensor back in place carefully so it's not cross-threaded and tightening it back again so it's nice and tight. The last step is to reconnect the sensor and driving the car around for a certain number of miles so the computer can clear the check engine light. Well that's it guys, hit thumbs up if you like this video, consider subscribing and thanks for watching.